Barry Harvey, fabulous game in goal against Sweden in game one in a 3-2 U.S. victory. April Heinrichs, strong, wearing number two. Shannon Higgins, playmaker out of the midfield, wearing number three. Carlo Worden in back, wearing number four. Linda Hamilton came on as a replacement in game one against Sweden, wearing number eight. Also, uh, Brandy Chastain, number six, making her first start in this tournament. Mia Hamm, number nine, only 19 years old. She scored a goal against Sweden. Michelle Akerstall, a leader, strong up front, wearing number 10. Julie Foudy at number 11. Karen Jennings, a pair of goals against Sweden, wearing number 12. Christine Lilly had to leave the game against Sweden, but is back in the lineup tonight, wearing number 13. Joy Biefeld, wearing number 14. Debbie Belkin, wearing number 16. And, of course, Mary Harvey. What a great job in goal for the United States. Well, here's a look at the U.S. team. They get in a little huddle before the start of the game, get that last little words of advice, get everybody on the same page, and then get out there because a win today will most assuredly get the U.S. into the quarterfinals, and that's all they want. And let's take a look at the Brazilians, a highly skilled squad. Pio Raisin is their fine goalkeeper. Lima wearing number two. Nogueira wearing number three tonight. Rego number four. Marcia Silva wearing number five. Mota number six. Silva wearing number seven. Bastos wearing number eight. Belo is the big scoring threat for the Brazilians. We'll be watching her tonight. Reno wearing number 11, and Alva Almeida wearing number 14. They are also looking for their second win to get into the quarterfinals. Expect Brazil to play a different game than Sweden did. Control the ball, flashy play, move it around, and try to make something happen. Not as physical as Sweden. Kevin Wall along with Matt Barr back in Punyu, China. Ying Dong Stadium, a full house. Over 16,000 looking on for this second game of the first FIFA World Championship for women's soccer. The captains, Marissa Nogueira, wearing number three for Brazil, and of course, April Heinrichs for the United States. Vadim Zuk is the referee from the Soviet Union, a pair of Chinese linespersons. And the toss apparently won by Brazil. And as you can see, even with a lot of folks from different uh, parts of the world, there can be communication gaps, even with the flip of the coin. Well, you have four nations represented, and therefore four different languages. So even though there is some communications problems, the tradition of the coin toss displays sportsmanship and that it is a game. And I think any confusion over communication has to be transcended by the sportsmanship that they want to display during the game. Well, in that win over Sweden, Karen Jennings, two goals, Mia Hamm with a single tally, noticeably absent from the U.S. scoring list, April Heinrichs and Michelle Akerstall. Do they need to get to those two players back in the offense? Well, absolutely. Some might say that that was an impressive win for the U.S. Well, it was a win, but one must remember that the U.S. had a three-goal lead, and it, Sweden came storming back. They got a goal. They got a long-distance 40-yard goal on, on a blast. And they missed a penalty kick. They missed some other opportunities. Mary Harvey came up with some key saves to keep Sweden from tying that game. The U.S. looked very disconcerted that last 20 minutes. They looked a little confused. If they are to compete further on in this tournament, they are going to have to eliminate those lapses in the play. So the U.S. was impressive for much of the game, but they have to play all 80 minutes. A not change, just most of it. A change of tactics against Brazil, different type of team, more highly skilled, perhaps not as physical as Sweden. Do you look for the U.S. to maybe change the approach tonight? Well, I think uh, the U.S. still has to attack like they've done all along through the CONCACAF qualifying tournament through this last game. Their best defense is an attacking offense. Now, the Brazilians did, ha did have a shutout against Japan, so the U.S. has to be concerned about that. Michelle Akerstall was shut down, but that was by Michelle's former coach, the coach of Sweden, Gunilla Pekul. You know, she knew how to play Michelle, so Michelle might get back into this game. I know she wants to because she's the U.S.'s all-time leading scorer. And, of course, April Heinrichs, who was shut out in the last game, also wants to get on the board. So here we go, April Heinrichs. We'll kick it off to Michelle Akerstall, and we are underway. Great to have you with us from Funyu, China. Immediately, a throw-in coming up. Of course, injury is very much a part of the U.S. team coming into this second game. That's right. They did uh, lose Chris Lilly 
in the middle of the Sweden game with a hip corner. Now, they're very painful and tough to come back from, so we'll have to watch her progress during this game. Joy Beefield also strained a hamstring. She's out there tonight, and April Heinrich's knee is acting up. She tore her cartilage in that knee this August, and so that will constantly be inflaming over this tournament. So those injuries, among others, uh, we'll have to keep an eye on. April Heinrichs on the offensive for the U.S. Gives right side to Akerstall. Akerstall looks like she wants to cross. Taken down very hard by Marissa Nogueira. And Stahl remains down on the turf here at Yingdong Stadium. And boy, that was a tough, tough tackle. We, we don't know the Brazilians. It's really a tough physical team, but boy, right off the get-go, they are going after the Americans. That's right, and uh, the U.S. likes when it gets physical, but this would be a tough, tough loss if they did lose Michelle Akerstall because she is really the spark plug, the, the spiritual leader, if you will, of this U.S. team. Michelle is up, and she's apparently okay. Shannon Higgins with the free kick. Almost a corner kick. Fed out in front, header, and a save, that time by Fiorazin. And a big save there, as April Heinrichs was on the doorstep with the header, and Fiorazin made the stop. And the first good scoring chance for the U.S. here tonight. Well, that was set up by the playmaker, Shannon Higgins. There you see April Heinrichs. She really wants to get back into this game, get onto the scoring end of it, because in the last game, they shut her down a bit, too. Tough tackle along the sidelines. Ball is loose, controlled by the Brazilians. And boy, you're going to see some great skill from the Brazilians here tonight. Great one-on-one -on -one ability, tremendous passing skills as well. And a nice defensive play there, and the ball played back in to Mary Harvey. Harvey was brilliant against Sweden. The one mistake she made was on a goal where the save was made, but the ball simply got off her hands and Vidicule put it past her into an open net. Now the U.S. counterattacking, Julie Foudy. Centers it in front, nobody there. Look out, here's Heinrichs, the left-footed drive, and it's wide of the goal. If so you, again, again, the U.S. with another great scoring opportunity. That's right, and it all was created by Julie Foudy making a good run. Brazil was playing an offside trap. They were trying to catch the U.S. in an offside position. Because they attack so frequently, they're saying, we can catch them offside. So, Fowdy timed her run, stayed onside, and was able to get a breakaway towards the goal and then cross it back in. You get a look at Marguerite Fiorezin now stepping in, Nogueira, to put that ball back in play. And the U.S. keeps Brazil bottled up. Karen Jennings, one-on-one, -on -one, down the left side, has some space. Jennings feeds out in front, knocked out of the zone, and finally the Brazilians clear it. Silva. And the ball cleared all the way down the field. The U.S., boy, tough tumble that time. And I believe Carlo Worden, down on the turf. Boy, a tough tackle as the ball was played back towards the Brazilian goal. We're only a couple minutes into the game, and already both teams are trying to establish a physical presence. I mean, people say that soccer isn't a tough game. People say that women especially don't play a tough game. Well, I, I have to disagree. The U.S. women are, is probably one of the toughest teams you will find, and it's already starting out that way. There's a lot of, a lot of extra hitting going on. Ball played out in front. And a beautiful stop by Marguerite Pierrezen. As that time, she just took the ball right off the foot of Christine Lilly. And Lilly, who had to leave the game against Sweden with a hip pointer, had a great opportunity, but give Pierrezen some credit there. Absolutely, and uh, there doesn't seem to be any after effects of Chris Lilly's hip pointer. She really uh, made a good stride on that ball, and the keeper came out to make a tremendous save. One step you more, and you have a goal. You talked about it. You talked about the tough physical play, and I, I'm wondering, you don't hear about it a lot in soccer. I know you hear more about it in your sport of football. If you play the Raiders or you play the New York Giants, the, uh, the matter of intimidation. Is there such an animal as intimidation at this level? Is there a, a matter of trying to intimidate your opponent? Absolutely, and especially the higher levels that you get. When I played in the NASL and the ASL, what you tried to do, I was a defender, so early in the game, you try to give the person across from you a good, hard, fair shot early in the game. 
let them know you're there. If the person's intimidated, you never see them again. If he's not, then you're just going to play soccer the rest of the game, but at least you know right away whether that person is going to be a tough mentally and physically in the game. And if you can get them out of the game early, do so. I've talked with a lot of uh, nasal forwards who say you may have kicked them once or twice. Any <laughs> truth to that rumor? No, no. Always fair, <laughs> fair, hard hits. That's the only way to play. Joy Biefeld with it, crossing the midfield line, moves it right side. Mia Hamm, long blast into the penalty area. Look out, trouble there, and finally covered by Pia Raisin. Was that miscommunication between Pia Raisin and Rago, or was it just good aggressive play by the U.S. and April Heinrichs? I think it was a little bit of both. Rago put a suicide pass back. That puts the goalkeeper in a lot of trouble. And good aggressive play by April Heinrichs. Just ran onto the ball. What do you mean by a suicide pass or suicide ball? <laughs> suicide ball is that 50-50 ball that uh, puts you in a no-win position. You have to go after it, but you know you're going to get smacked in it. And I think that's what happened with Rago's pass back to the goalkeeper. Back where I grew up, we used to call those hospital balls because yeah. some of those <laughs> passes could land you in the hospital. Well, with the amount of aggression that's being played out here tonight, I, I mean, you will see that occasionally, and you see the players shy off of that. Mia Hamm with the header, feeds it to the midfield line. Aker Stahl can't control. Here's Silva with it, dropping it right side. Almeida with the run. Lilly runs for the ball. Instead, it's Silva. Centering pass, headed out of the danger zone. Here's the U.S. trying to clear the ball, but Brazil keeps holding it in. They keep putting the pressure on, and now we get a whistle and an offside coming up against Brazil. Well, Brazil's attack seems to be concentrated on hitting the point man, Belo. If she is in position, then the other players should be running on to her. And so it's almost a, a concentrated attack. Go up there to the one man. Belo is the player they look to. Here's April Heinrichs. U.S. looks to her in the tight spots. Great one-on-one -on -one player, but her centering pass deflected out of bounds off of Bastos. And we'll be back with more from Punyu, China. I score nothing, nothing. The U.S. and Brazil. The ball knocked across the line by a Brazilian player. So Karen Jennings, two goals against Sweden in game one of this FIFA World Championship for Women's Soccer will take the corner kick. Arguably, Karen Jennings is the best one-on-one -on -one player that the U.S. has. She is constantly going right at the goal. If she can't go at the goal, she brings it to the end line and brings it across. The all-time NCAA goal-scoring leader. The kick. Headed in front, but offside. Now you see the offside trap at work. The Brazilian defense moved up and caught the U.S. player in an offside position. Not one, not two, but I think three players were offside. So the restart to Brazil. All it takes is one. If you have one man behind that defense, then you are definitely offside. And when we say man and man to man, it is not in an uh, insulting way to the women. We know they're women. We uh, admire their play. It's just general terms of saying man to man defense and whatnot. And a throw-in coming up. Again, the United States will put the ball back into play. The U.S. scoring three goals against Sweden, looking for their first goal of the evening here. Julie Foudy will do the honors on the throw-in. Ball played in to Karen Jennings. Now Christine Lilly plays it towards the box. Here's Aker Stahl with a drive. This one rejected out of the penalty area. Neither team really able to get an advantage here in the early going. It's been very, very even. Just over 10 minutes gone. First half action, no score. The United States and Brazil, ball hugging that sideline. Let's see if it gets out. And it doesn't. So they play it back into Pia Raisin. There you get a look at the score, and just over 10 minutes gone. 
Both teams might be still a little stiff from the game that they played a couple days ago, and so they're still trying to find their feet, get the blood flowing again, get the muscles loose to get ready for this game, because as the game wears on, the fitness of the U.S. team might quite possibly shine through because they are considered one of the best-conditioned teams in the world championship here. The throw-in will belong not to the United States and April Heinrichs, but to Brazil. The travel, both of these teams coming long distances, is it a factor for either team? I think in the first game, yes. Uh, you had a lot of adjusting to do. The U.S. traveled from North Carolina then to New York, then to Zurich. There's a little action here. Then they picked up four European teams, traveled with those four teams on to China. It was 40 hours of traveling that they did, and that wears anybody out. So they really uh, had a bit of jet lag, and although it was uncomfortable riding with teams that you're going to be competing against, uh, it was the way FIFA wanted it. Here's Silva, plays it towards the United States penalty area. Right there, Mia Hamm, just 19 years old. That is an amazing story. Joined the women's national team at age 15 and was told by Anson Dorrance, hey, you're going to have to work harder. Well, she thought just her skills alone was going to get her a position on the team and keep the position on the team. That got her a tryout. The thing that Anson wanted from her is all the other things. Team spirit, a good practice, ethic, meshing with the other players, all those little things, being tough physically, being tough mentally, those things all contribute to the skills. So just the skills alone got her the tryout. Everything else kept her on the team, and she's done admirably. We get a whistle, foul against Brazil. Brazilians don't agree. Shannon Higgins will put it into play. Now she gives way to Michelle Aker Stahl, all-time leading scorer for the women's national team. Boy, tremendous leadership qualities as well. Christine Lilly, number 13, also over there. Let's see who will take it. Aker stall, long drive, and just high and wide. She had the right idea. Oh, and put it just high and wide. Absolutely, and she has the strength to take that shot. And she just blasts it. There you see Shannon Higgins. She's the playmaker for the team. She hangs around midfield, tries to make things happen for the U.S. Send the balls up to April Heinrichs. Favorite food, appropriately enough, Chinese. You think she'll be able to find a <laughs> couple of Chinese food places here in Punyu? Well, that was, a, that was a problem for the U.S. team the last time they were here. A lot of the U.S. players had problems with eating solely Chinese food. Especially Carla Worden. She weighs 125. She lost 10 pounds. That's almost 10% of her body weight. Ball played towards the U.S. zone. The United States doing a very, very good job right now in controlling their half of the field. They have not let Brazil do a lot of fancy dribbling, fancy passing. They are obviously very technically skilled and you just don't want to give them an opportunity. There you get a look at Marcia Silva feeding it to Marilza Silva. Don't know if that's a relation. Now Karen Jennings dribbles through one player, two players, three players. Karen Jennings moving in the shot. Oh, she fired it wide. And that time a tremendous run by Karen Jennings. Great one-on-one -on -one skill. She beat three Brazilian players. Well, that's why Anson Durance thinks so, so highly of her. Look at this. She just keeps running at the ball, keeps the ball close enough to her so that she can keep control and still get an excellent shot on goal. Karen Jennings, again, one, two, the third player can't make it over. Now again, the U.S. attacking Mia Hamm. Nice slide tackle, ball out of bounds. I believe that'll be a throw into the United States. And here comes Karen Jennings to take it. You look at Pia Raisin directing traffic out in front of her goal. April Heinrichs planting herself right in front of the Brazilian goalkeeper. Karen Jennings. It's a corner. Out in front, the header is wide. 
Boy, and that shows Michelle Aker's stall, that 5'10". She got way above everybody else on the Brazilian defense to get that, to win that head ball. Now, getting back to the food, what we had talked about before, to solve the problem that they had the last time that they were in China, they brought their own chefs along. The chef so happened to be Anson Durance's brother and Carla Worden's boyfriend, both restaurateurs, and they said if they win, they'll take all the credit, and if they lose, the girls will just say thank you for the good food. I know you've been, uh, <laughs> you, you've been chowing down at uh, a lot of the training tables around the National Football League. How was the food? Well, you, <laughs> these guys pretty good cooks? Hey, they know their business, and, and really it has helped. I think it showed in some of the play, especially against Sweden, where they kept their pace, they kept their fitness through the whole game. I think that was a welcome addition to the team, because most of these uh, women on this team, they've had to give up a lot to play in this World's Championship, and you have to admire them for that. Carla Word knocks it up to Akers stall. Karen Jennings make that Shannon Higgins looking for... Jennings at an offside against the United States. Well, I tell you, the Brazilians run that offside trap so well. That is the second time they have caught the United States so far. It's almost like Brazil is conceding the speed of the U.S. forwards and trying to negate that speed by playing the offside trap. Lima. Plays the ball towards the end line, out of bounds. It will be a throw-in to Shannon Higgins and the United States. Still no score. We are 15 minutes into this second game of the first FIFA World Championship for women's soccer. Now the throw-in comes back to Brazil. Here's Belo. She has the ball stripped by Christine Lilly. And Lilly plays a long ball up to Heinrichs. Nice run by April Heinrichs. Nobody with her. She has to wait. Finally clears it out in front. And right there, Pio Raisin, the fine goalkeeper for Brazil. Well, we're starting to see a little bit of what we saw in the game against Sweden. The U.S. players are sending the ball up into space and allowing their speed to run onto the, run onto the ball and beat the opposing player. Nice run. Here comes Biefeld. She has it knocked free and back to get it. Shannon Higgins. Now Carlo Worden. She starts everything from the back for the United States. And the ball cleared out of bounds. Interesting move there by number 14, Lunalva Almeida. And I, th I think her teammates asking, her teammates saying, hey, why'd you do it? I think she was a little afraid. I don't think she wanted to give any opportunity at all to the U.S. player because she was alone. She didn't want to get caught in a one-on-one -on -one situation that deep in her defense. Now Christine Lilly down the left side, long cross and up onto the top of the netting. I score. 15 minutes into the first half, nothing, nothing. The USA and Brazil will be back in a moment. States and Brazil battling for the coveted M&M's Cup in this first FIFA World Championship for women's soccer. FIFA is the world governing body for soccer. FIFA, Federation International Football Association. You think Paul Tagliabue in the NFL wield some power? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. FIFA has well over 100 countries and hundreds and hundreds of teams that they have to control, and they do it beautifully. Well, they have, they have set up a tremendous event here in China. And I know the Chinese people, both here in Punyu and other locales around China, have really responded. I mean, sellout crowd here tonight. We've had sellouts at... At all of the venues, this is an amazing turnout, and I think FIFA is to be congratulated. Absolutely. At the opening ceremonies in Guangzhou, that's old Canton, they had over 60,000 people show up for the opening ceremonies. They've had sellouts at most of the games, so the people are really supporting us, and I think FIFA is very, very impressed at the way China itself has put on a tournament. We drove to Canton two days ago looking for the Pro Football Hall of Fame. They said it wasn't there. <laughs> said it was outside of Cleveland. <laughs> U.S. controlling. No score. There you get a look at the clock. Just over 20 minutes gone in the first half. Well, Kevin, Wall, Kevin Wall along with Matt Barr has another offside call against the United States. The U.S. is starting to assert itself. And if you noticed, another offside was called there. 
Brazil is going to rely on that. We've seen it during this game, and a number of the teams in the CONCACAF qualifying tournament tried it. Anson Durance called it the suicide trap because you live by it or you die by it, and it exposes you. If you don't run it just right, you put your goalkeeper in a world of hurt because she's all alone against a lot of people coming at him. Meaning it can either work or you can end up with a one on the keeper situation offensively to the defense. And you're depending on the linesman to make the appropriate call. And it's another human factor. They don't always make the appropriate call. So you can get burned by it very, very often. Boy, nice play there. Scissored up to Karen Jennings. Jennings on the run. Leaves it. Right there is... Foudy, long drive and the save made by Pia Raisin. Julie Foudy running into the open space and getting the shot away on Pia Raisin, who came up big. Now, we didn't see a lot of her in the last game against Sweden, but she's starting to assert herself in this game. She's taken a couple of shots, and she's making some good runs at the goal. Now the Brazilians move the other way. Long drive. They try and chip the keeper, but the shot well wide, and... Mary Harvey was ready. So a corner kick coming up the Brazilians. Roselli Belo, she is the big gun offensively for the Brazilians. Now the way the U.S. seems to be playing these corner kicks is they put most of the defenders in that six-yard area and let the other team spread out around it so they can expand to the ball. The Brazilians cover both the near post, the far post, and in the center of the goal. And then they have people standing on the top of the 18, on the D as they call it, to fall onto the ball as it comes out. Long chip, knocked around the box, and finally cleared out of there. Good play defensively by the Americans. And back to chase, Marissa Nogueira. And Nogueira powers it down the field. U.S. doing a good job defensively, giving the Brazilians one shot. And that is it. Here's Karen Jennings, long feed, looking for April Heinrichs. She chips, and he's, she scores! April Heinrichs got Pia Raisin to come out to challenge. And the United States leads in this one, one to nothing. Well, that was all set up by Karen Jennings. She sends a nice long ball across to April Heinrichs coming onto it. The keeper is now in no man's land. Comes out about halfway. Does she stay on the line or does she come out? She's caught in between. April Heinrichs takes advantage of it. Here's another shot of it. Watch how she sees the keeper coming out and just wants to tap it by her and finds the far post. Great goal for the U.S. Now, is that something a different goalkeeper would have reacted to differently? Some goalkeepers might come off the line quicker. Maybe that keeper wasn't quick enough to get there in time, but she felt that that situation dictated she had to come out. Some keepers might stay on the line but then you're really relying on your defense to get back and maybe close the distance between a person who is obviously wide open standing there at the 18. The official call on the goal, April Heinrichs, the goal, her first of the tournament from Karen Jennings, 23 minutes into the first half. So the United States leading the Brazilians by a score of one to nothing. April Heinrichs is now on the board. She finally got broke the ice, and maybe this will be something for her to build on as the tournament goes on. A lot of times, players go, go through goal-scoring droughts. Michelle Akerstahl was really shut down against Sweden, and I know that rankles her, and I know she wants to start getting into the action and getting some goals. Julie Foudy, long feed for Jennings. Plays it up the left side. Back to get it, Almeida. Leaves it for their goalkeeper, Marguerite Fioraison. The Brazilians trailing here by a score of one to nothing. Well, as we were talking about, the U.S. players obviously want to score, and they want to score for the team. Any opportunity that they get to score, they're going to take. This is not a selfish endeavor. They know that if they put the ball in the back of the net, it's helping the team in general. So although they want to break the ice and get on the board, it's not an individual thing it's for the team u.s leads one to nothing we'll be back right after this kevin wall along with matt Barr, back at fun news ying dong stadium great to have you with us the first fifa world championship for women's soccer while the u.s battles brazil the north carolina tar heels in the ncaa tournament back home and a lot of these players on the field tonight pulling for the tar heels
That's right. Nine of the 18 players are from UNC. Anson Durance calls it his Tar Heel core. Six of those players are on the field right now. Linda Hamilton, Carla Worden, Shannon Higgins, Mia Hamm, Chris Lilly, and April Heinrichs. I mean, that's a great tradition that Anson has there. He's had a great reputation, great success, and I'm sure they're all thinking about how UNC is doing in the tournament. Well, they are always a perennial favorite in the NCAA tournament as they contest it back home. Brazil with the free kick. But one, Moda will take it. At one point, Anson was coaching both the men's team, the women's team, and going to law school. He went home to his wife one night and said, look, I'm getting four hours of sleep a night. I've got to get rid of something. So what did he do? He quit law school. <laughs> You know, he calls himself a soccer bum. He's wanted to show the world that the U.S. can play soccer with style. Erase the stigma that the U.S. can't play attractive soccer. And I think just these first two games alone in this FIFA Women's World Championship, he's shown that. You get a look at Linda Hamilton. She'll be marking Roselli Belo, the big offensive threat for Brazil. They'll look for Belo here. Ball tossed in. Here's Belo with it. And look at how three U.S. defenders attracted to it. Balo. Ball will be thrown in here by the United States. Can you afford double, triple teaming at this level of play? Well, if there are no supporting players up there, usually when you know when you're being triple teamed or double teamed, there should be someone open. If you're not getting in any support, well then yes, you can triple team someone. Karen Jennings, nice run, may be hurt. They say play on. Ball loose outside the area, finally played into Fioraison. And Jennings is still down on the turf. The natural grass service, by the way, outstanding here in Punyu. There you get a look at Karen Jennings, who is back up. Ball played back in. Mary Harvey, not too busy here tonight so far, still early on. Toss out to Biefeld. Now Mia Hamm, tremendously talented, loses the ball to Silva. Now the U.S. gets it back. Julie Foudy plays it up to Akerstall. And we get a whistle. And what do we have here? We have Foul it. against Brazil. It was a serious enough collision that Michelle Akerstall was unable to retain possession of the ball. So rather than say play on, as been the case in the past, she lost control. He let, called the foul. Now a lot of folks would say, well, the U.S. appeared to have advantage. Well, she didn't have control of the ball. It's a judgment call by the ref. He judged it that way. Ball will be played in towards the area. Ball loose. Oh, almost deflected on goal. Wide. Now, no offside was called there. Obviously, they were running the trap, but Michelle Akerstall beat the trap, was standing all alone, claimed she was pulled and tripped, but nothing called. More coming up from Punyu, China. The U.S. leads. One Marguerite Piarazin drives the ball down the field for Brazil. And a throw in coming up to the United States. U.S. leads on a goal by April Heinrichs from Karen Jennings. At the 23-minute mark, here's Karen Jennings again on the attack. The errant pass controlled by Brazil. They look for Belo, and another good defensive play by the U.S. defense. They have controlled Belo so far here in the first half. They surely have, and if you notice, the defense is playing almost an inspired game right now. I think the reason is they were embarrassed a little bit against Sweden. They were confused at the end of the game, and they gave up some goals. Maybe they were goals that they would have given up anyway, no matter how well they played. But towards the end of the game, they were confused. So I think they wanted to straighten that out and prove to the rest of the teams in this competition that they can play good, solid defense. And that's all coming from Carla Worden. She's the linchpin. There you get a look at the score off the throw-in. U.S. on the attack. Christine Lilly. Long ball towards the area. Volleyed high in the air, it comes down, controlled by the U.S., and a long drive looping over the end line by Shannon Higgins. And a goal kick coming up to the Brazilians.
Ball played in the big, strong Solange Bastos. You can hear that the U.S. team working very hard at communicating. Lima drives the ball towards the U.S. goal. Now controlled in the midfield. Long ball. Pia Raisin comes racing out and clears it out of the field of play. A throw in coming up to the United States and Karen Jennings. Well, this time she didn't want to be caught in that no man's land again. So she came racing out immediately to, to beat the U.S. player to the ball and knock it out of bounds. Pia Raisin looking on. Ball played in. Out in front. Back pass. Now out of the penalty area. There's April Heinrichs. Great one-on-one -on -one player, but the Brazilian defender breaks the play up. And here comes Marilza Silva. Feeds towards Belo, but right there for the U.S., Linda Hamilton. Hamilton, an interesting story. Three years at North Carolina State before transferring to North Carolina. If you can't beat them, join them. Yeah, that's right. So much frustration. She said, well, I may as well play for a team that's had my number the whole time. I want to win me one of those NCAA titles. Can't say a blamer. There's Balo, and again, two American players right on top of her. And finally, a throw in coming up to the Brazilians. So Balo drawing special attention from the U.S. defense. Linda Hamilton drawing the asylum the assignment, rather, of shadowing the outstanding offensive player, Roselli Bello. Well, Linda did such a good job coming in for Chris Lilly the last game against Sweden, winning balls, bashing heads, as they like to say. It's almost like she deserved another chance, and this chance was to start this game and mark the toughest Brazilian on the field. A native of Atlanta, Georgia. Ball played in. Finally cleared, all the way back towards the midfield. Almeida with it for the Brazilians. Drives it towards the U.S. zone. Ball played back to center. And the U.S. again. Brazil looking for that offside trap. You can tell that they keep inching up, inching up. And they're very patient with their attack. They're, they're moving the ball around. They're not rushing it. And the U.S. has to be careful of falling into Brazil's style. They've got to maintain their style of constantly attacking the other team's goal. Julie Foudy taken down hard by Marilza Silva. And the U.S. will take a free kick outside their own penalty area. There you get a look at the 27-year-old Silva. Carla Worden. Knocks it back to Mary Harvey. Harvey really hasn't been all that busy tonight. No, she hasn't been tested at all. She had that one save early on. She covered it up very carefully. But in this situation, the defense is playing so strong that uh, she really isn't getting the opportunity. So you might see the defensive players knock it back to her just to get, it in the, get her in the game. Is it tough to turn it on and off for a goalkeeper? Absolutely. Uh, they need those couple of touches to get in, to get a feel for the game, make a good save, make any save early so that a tough save later on isn't a surprise. Here's April Heinrichs. One-on-one, -on -one going left side of the shot. She scores! April Heinrichs! Her second goal of the game, U.S. on top of Brazil, 2 to nothing. And again, April Heinrich's tremendous one-on-one -on -one skill. Well, she just sets up the Brazilian defender here and takes an impossible angle shot that keepers believe that ca they cannot be scored upon, especially, as you see there, to the far post. I mean, that's a really tough angle that she nails home. Matt, why does the defender force her to the outside when she has three defensive players on the inside? Why not funnel her to the inside? Oh, that's the best place for her. Always force the player to the baseline, to the end line, because that angle they believe you cannot score from. Uh, in this case, the strategy backfired. I mean, April Heinrich comes up with her second goal of the tournament, and uh, maybe the, the dam is opening for her. Heinrichs, her second goal of the night, unassisted, 35 minutes into the first half. Now Karen Jennings down the left side. U.S. on the attack again. Moves past one defender. 
Jennings slows it down. Oh, boy, tough tackle there. Ball loose, finally crossing the end line, and Karen Jennings, I think, wanted a foul, didn't get it. And we'll come back to Punyu, China, 2 to nothing. The United States leading Brazil. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to Punyu, China, Yingdong Stadium. Boy, it's great to have you with us. The United States and Brazil. Kevin Wall along with Matt Barr. The United States leading 2 to nothing. Late going first half. Well, the pace has really started to pick up here, Kevin. You can see the players, the U.S. players especially, starting to move a little faster and keep that attack going. Long lead pass, April Heinrichs. Down the right side, centers in front, Aker Stahl fans on it. The keeper is down. Here's Karen Jennings, she shoots, she scores! Karen Jennings makes it three to nothing. That entire play was set up by April Heinrichs taking the ball to the end line, slipping it across, and although Aker Stahl fans on the shot, she draws the keeper out. What's really impressive here, though, is Karen Jennings standing there. The keeper gets back up. She waits for the keeper to make the move, and she shows great patience, and then just chips it into the back of the net. Looks like a routine goal, but it's really a professional goal by Karen Jennings. A lesser player might have tried to play that ball first time or quickly, but give Karen Jennings some credit. She waited and had amazing patience, and it paid off in a goal, and the U.S. leading now three to nothing. Well, she could see the goalkeeper rushing madly to cover, get back into position on the near post after the ball went across the center. She saw that rush, said, oh, maybe she will make a mistake, and she did. Puts it home. Karen Jennings, third goal of the tournament, first tonight. U.S. on top, three to nothing. Now, this is where the U.S. has to be careful. They let Sweden sneak back in the game with a couple of uh, good opportunities. The U.S. must continue attacking if they're to be successful against Brazil. Ball moving down the right side. Biefeld with it. Centers it. Here's a drive, and it is going to be towards the end line, but held in. Biefeld with it. Lobs it towards the goal. Loose out in front, and knocked in! Pia Raisin knocked the ball into her own net. And the U.S. on top now, four to nothing. And things falling apart for the Brazilians. Oh, my. I mean, you could see the frustration on the defenders just before that play. They were saying, get the ball out of here. Let's get control of this game. And then Joy Beefield just slips the ball back in. And what a shame for a goalkeeper to knock it in. Although Akerstall gets credit for the goal, it's really a shame when you knock in an own goal. That shows you the intimidation factor. Aker stall so tough in the air, and you know that Pia Raisin knew that, and maybe she was just a tad intimidated. And she just couldn't find the handle on the ball when she lunged at it. Santos entering the game, replacing Solange Bastos. Bastos limping to the sideline. So Santos entering at the 39th minute. The goal by Akers stall from Biefeld, 39 minutes in. So we are coming to the final minute of the first half. Again, 40-minute halves here in the first FIFA World Championship for women's soccer. There may well be some injury time that's being kept down on the field. Well, that just shows you how powerful the U.S. offense can be with that attacking with that attacking offense. Three goals in four minutes. I mean, that, that's almost impossible to come back from. But as we saw in the last game, Sweden was able to come back from a 3-0 deficit. Maybe Brazil can do the same. You can bet that at halftime, Anson Dorrance is going to be talking to his club maybe about that. I think so. I, I think the letdown at the end of the Sweden game, that they, they don't want that to happen again. So look for at halftime, Anson to start talking to his players, say, look, we've got a four-goal lead. Let's not make the same mistake we made the last time. Keep attacking. Keep going at Brazil's goal. We are now into extra time being kept down on the field. Here's Balo breaking free down the right side. Slides it out in front and cleared out of the danger zone. There you get a look at the Soviet referee. And there you have it. There you have it. Vadim Zuk says the first half is over.
and the United States bolts out to a 4 to nothing lead over Brazil, and the American crowd here in China loves every minute of it. Well, you know Brazil was hoping that half would end five minutes ago, so it would only be a one-goal lead for the U.S. Fusing rule in soccer is the offside rule. Brazil uses the offside trap. Anson Durance calls it the suicide trap. Here they beat this offside trap. April Heinrichs comes up with an opportunity and rams it home, beating Pio Rezin. Now let's take a look at this offside rule. Here, the goalkeeper is the first defender. The yellow shirt on the right of your screen is the second defender. The two white shirts, the U.S. players, are in an onside position right there. If that yellow shirt were to run to the left, it would put those two white shirts in an offside position. But here, the pass is made, and once the pass is made, the offside rule is no longer valid. They are in an onside position. So the play continues. Karen Jennings' pass is now legal, finds April Heinrichs. Now we have a goalkeeper's dilemma. Pierre Rezin comes out. Should she have stayed on the line? Well, it's too late to come out, and a goal is scored. The U.S. leads 1-0. April Heinrichs was shut out against Sweden in game one, but she comes up with another big goal here tonight in the first half. Yes, she takes the defender towards the baseline. Pia Rezin again thinks she has the near post covered once this move is made. But April Heinrichs surprises her with a blast to the far corner right there. That made it 2 to nothing. Karen Jennings, another goal in this tournament and a very impressive goal, a world-class goal. Yes, it is. April Heinrich set this one up, too. She's looking for Michelle Akerstall in the middle, but she fans on the shot. Into the screen comes Karen Jennings, showing great poise and patience. The keeper rushes to make the save, but she makes an oh-so-difficult shot look oh-so-easy. The U.S. 3, Brazil. With Matt Barr, we are at halftime in Punyu, China. As the United States leads Brazil 4 to nothing at halftime, the Brazilians making their way back out onto the field. And obviously an impressive performance by the United States in the first half. Absolutely. Scoring four goals in any game, let alone in a half, is impressive, especially against this caliber competition. Now, all is not lost for Brazil. They are down 4-0, but they won their first game. They beat Japan 1-0. They still have an opportunity to get into the quarterfinals. To do that, though, they need some things to happen. They need to win the next game or tie the next game, but they need to score a couple goals in case it gets to goal differential. So I don't think you'll see Brazil give up by any means. I think you'll see them try to even attack more, get some players in the game that can start pushing forward. By the same token, Anson Durance does not want a repeat of what happened against Sweden. He doesn't want the defense, not to collapse, but to be a little disheveled in the back. So what he will say is, keep attacking the Brazilian goal. Keep attacking, because that's what got us here. That's our strength. Well, I know a lot of folks always say, well, I guess it's time to pack it in, move back defensively, don't go forward a lot, uh, don't commit a lot of players to the offense. At what point do you do that, and do you ever do that at this level of competition? Well, the thing that marks a good team or a good coach is staying with the style that got you there, staying with what is successful for you. If they, you start putting them in a, a defensive scheme that they're not used to, well, then maybe come another game, they might say, well, let's go back into that defensive scheme. We're not real comfortable with it. It throws them off their rhythm. They want to keep the rhythm because not only do they have to win this game, but they have to take that momentum into the next game and then into the quarterfinals. If they win tonight, if the U.S. wins tonight, they are most assuredly in the quarterfinals. They don't know who they would play yet. There are other games that were played today. We'll try to get to those scores as we play this half. Well, you mentioned uh, the USA in their next game against Japan. That should be an interesting matchup. And if the USA is all but assured of a quarterfinal berth, what do you do with some of the injured players? There are a number of injured players, April Heinrichs nursing uh, some knee problems. You've got uh, Christine Lilly, who uh, had to leave game one against Sweden with the hip pointer. Do you perhaps sit some players out, maybe in the second half, maybe against Japan? Well, you need to get your injured players healthy, especially if the game against Japan does not affect your standings. Now, obviously, they'd want to win against Japan to hopefully get the best draw for themselves in the quarterfinals. They'd want to play, say, the weakest team that's left. However, the game against Japan is only two days away. So 
you have to have a balance. You have to say you have to weigh your priorities and say who, what players can we rest and still win the game? What players do we need without question for the quarterfinals healthy? In case you're wondering, Brazil's next battle is against Sweden, and we know how tough they are as they came back on the U.S. down three nothing to draw to within a goal, losing three two off the kickoff. U.S. with the ball. I think we and should a change in the lineup. I think we should say again that U.S. the U.S. team was the top seed in their group, Group B, and they are one of the pre-tournament favorites to win the entire World Championship for women. You get a look on the far side of the field, Brandy Chastain. She is on for April Heinrichs, so Heinrichs is done for the evening. Well, it looks like they are going to rest her for the rest of this game. Maybe her knee is acting up on her. She did have that damage to the knee back in August, and it, it does flare up. So if they believe this game is in hand, let's get Brandy some experience in the competition and rest April. There's Brandy Chastain, Michelle Akerstall, back to Chastain, back to Akerstall. And boy, look at that tackle. Tough tackle there by Marilza Silva. And no call on the play. Brandy Chastain is no stranger to injuries either. She came back with a double ACL, anterior cruciate ligament, in 87 and 88. Both knees with the ACL, and, uh, you know, she had a long hiatus from the national team. Now she's back, wants to get some experience. She made her mark in the CONCACAF tournament against Martinique. She scored five consecutive goals. I don't have a medical degree, but ACL, that sounds serious. Well, I've had that. It's no fun. It put me out for at least a year. She had a double ACL, so she was out for 87 and 88. On the dribble, Silva, as it knocked to the near wing, and kept into the field of play, so the Brazilians will take over in the midfield. First five minutes of the second half, U.S. on top, four to nothing. Scoring a lot of goals and scoring them very close together. Mary Harvey, who has not been all that busy here tonight. And I'm sure she would love to keep it that way. And look at Balo. Balo just kind of glaring at her. Jennings almost had a chance. Now here's Akers stall. Low shot handled by Pia Raisin. A lot of folks may be asking, a shot like that, you have an open shot on goal. When do you make that decision? I'm going high, I'm going low, or is it just by chance? I think at that point, they're just trying to hit it as hard as they can do an area and hope that it leaves your foot well enough that it catches the goalkeeper flat-footed. Linda Hamilton, along the far side, playing defense. Now the U.S. gets it back, Joy Beefield. Another tough slide tackle by the Brazilians. They have not been afraid to play it tough. There's a tough tackle by Linda Hamilton and the foul against the United States. So trading tough tackles. Well, Linda Hamilton, what a job she has done on Roselli Belo, the big offensive threat for the Brazilians. That apparently not a foul. They'll just rule a throw in to the Brazilian. There's Silva battling. Finally, it's cleared out of the penalty area. Boy, the action fast and furious in that first half. Yeah, United seems, States with goals by Heinrichs, Heinrichs, Jennings, and Akerstall. Yeah, and it seems to have slowed down here a bit. The pace has slowed down. I'm not sure if the U.S. is just trying to find their feet again or if they're responding to the Brazilian attack. It, it doesn't seem like the same half that we left. Do you notice any sort of a slowdown by the U.S.? Do you notice any uh, difference in the deployment of the troops, so to speak? Well, it, it's almost like they are responding to the Brazilian attack. I, I say that because usually the U.S. likes to let the other team defend against them and let the other team play the U.S.'s game. So right now, the U.S. is playing Brazil's game, which is knock the ball around, keep the pace slow. These two teams playing for the M&M's Cup. Tremendous competition. We'll get a throw-in now to the Brazilians. 
And again, Linda Hamilton is there. Boy, she has been the rock of Gibraltar defensively for the United States here tonight. She really has. She came in, as we said before, against Sweden and did very well for an injured Chris Lilly. And she deserved to get the start in this game, marking Brazil's toughest person out there, Belo. And you almost know that Belo's going to get her goals. You just have to hope it's not tonight. You have to hope that it comes up a little bit later on in the tournament against Sweden. Sure. Throw in by the U.S. team, Julie Foudy. And the U.S. looking for a fifth goal here tonight. This is amazing, though. You talk about the Brazilians and all of their skill. And the U.S. in one half scoring four goals. I think that that shows that the U.S. soccer is competitive around the world and dominant in most areas. They, they've really shown that good skills can be combined with good fitness. These girls have been together a lot of years. There's a lot of experience out there. Most of the women out there have better than 25 international uh, games. So that experience, that maturity really comes through in the form of confidence. Ball played to the left side. Another tough tackle there on Karen Jennings. A tackle by Rosa Lima. And again, the Brazilians content to play very tough physical soccer rather than the highly skilled that we'd really expected. Here's Akers stall. Long drive. Bends wide of the goal. And look at Pia Raisin saying, hey, who's got her? That is one unhappy lady. Sure, you can't give Michelle Akerstall that open shot like that. She has such a powerful shot that obviously Pure Raisin doesn't want to be tested. So get in front of the shot. Defend. That's their job. Well, I know the U.S. relies a great deal on Mary Harvey to communicate with her defenders. Pure Raisin doing the same thing at the other end of the field. Goal kick to the Brazilians who trail four to nothing. Ball held in again. Well, the U.S. doing a great job of controlling the play. Mia Hamm trying to hold it in. Finally controlled by the Brazilians. Here's Foudy. Foudy taken down from behind and a foul coming up against the Brazilians. And number six, Rosalene Mota. Boy, it's tremendous to bring all of these great teams from all over the world here to China. And the fans here in China have responded. Sellout crowds just about everywhere. Now here's Karen Jennings inside the box. Tries to dribble wide. Can't. Holds on the boy. Look at that ball control. Finally loses her footing. And Silva will dribble out. Now drives the ball towards the U.S. goal. Worden lays it back to Mary Harvey. You talk about the 12 teams that are here and how exciting it is. Well, it really is. This is the first women's world championship. Who knew where the Super Bowl and the NFL would grow from their first one? Who knew where the World Cup for men would grow to into the international exposition it is? So this being the first for women, I'm excited about this. This is... This is a good time and a good place to be because the U.S. women are dominating the world stage. Well, and the history of world soccer is being changed right here in China. And that's the amazing thing. And I think that these players, no matter how the U.S. does in this tournament, they can certainly take comfort in the knowledge that they have helped to change the course of soccer, not just in the United States, but in the world. Sure, and these, all these women are going to be role models for many of the women around the U.S., many of the young girls who are just starting to pick up the game. Many of the girls out here had brothers and fathers and boyfriends, fiancés, who play the game, and that's what has honed their skill. Brazil now trying to break out. They're looking for some offense. They're down four to nothing. What can you do tactically? Is it a matter of putting more players into the offense, moving midfielders closer to the opposition goal. Exactly what can you do if you're a coach? Well, I think at this point, Brazil has to start taking chances, putting more people up front, giving more support to the point, the point woman, Belo, because many times she's all alone up there. Here comes Brandy Chastain with a chance. She winds up, miskicked. 
And it rolls in on Pia Raisin. She may have gotten more turf than she did ball. But you'd hear the roar of the crowd as she drove down the field and then the change of the roar when she mishit that shot. And she looked like she hurt her foot on the shot by taking up that much turf. If you'd done that on artificial turf, you would have gotten turf toe. And let's see what the call's going to be. Was she over the end line? And I believe they're going to rule that Mary Harvey was over the end line. So a critical corner kick here. And the Brazilians with a good opportunity to possibly capitalize on a U.S. mistake. Well, let's count the Brazilians that get into the 18-yard area. You see most of the U.S. defenders, almost the entire team, back in the 6-yard area. Marcia Silva. Well, you can hear the Americans communicating in their own zone. Ball chip, fisted out of there by Mary Harvey. She said, I'm not gonna take any chances and just fisted it out of the zone. And just four Brazilian yellow shirts in the box. Now Linda Hamilton whistled down for a foul. Boy, I like the way Linda Hamilton plays. She plays very tough and against a very tough, a very speedy opponent. She's and really Roselli Balo. Yeah, she's really giving Balo no room to breathe. That's good marking. It, it makes a game unpleasant for Balo, but it's good for the U.S. in that she's closing down their top player. You could see Samira Prado lurking out in front of the U.S. goal. Look at her just standing in front of Mary Harvey. Ball chipped towards the area. It comes down, and Linda Hamilton just powers it out of there. Again, only four yellow jerseys in that area. They, they don't seem to really be wanting to press home any attack. There, there's no sense of urgency in the Brazilian attack. And with less than 30 minutes to go in the second half, you have to feel that the Brazilians have to find some way to mount some offense. You talked about them taking chances. Does that leave you vulnerable at the other end? Well, the offside trap alone leaves you vulnerable many times, but... Uh, they're really not taking the chances yet, so they're no more vulnerable than they were last half. And they had four goals scored on them. I mean, it's almost like Brazil is conceding the game early in the second half, and I don't think that they can do that. They have a good opportunity to get to the quarterfinals, and they need to get a tie or a win in the next two games. Carla Worden with the drive and a throw-in coming up to the Brazilians. There you get a look at Nonalva Almeida. And the ball headed out of bounds. Now they throw in this time a little bit closer. In fact, too close for Vadim Zouk. And now they're going to give it to the United States. Even in world-class soccer, you see players making a common mistake, an illegal throw-in. And that is what happened to the Brazilians there. Christine Lilly at the hip pointer against Sweden, but apparently okay here tonight. Playing very well. Ball headed, overheaded back towards midfield. Michelle Akerstall's her pass broken up. Gets it back. Plays a nice ball up the wing. Karen Jennings leaves it for Lilly. Lilly bends it out in front, feeds towards the penalty area. Here's Brandy Chastain centering it in front. Ball knocked loose by Akers Stahl. Finally cleared by the Brazilians. Now that was six passes strung together that ended in a shot. Akers Stahl started it. She almost got to finish it with a potential shot that was blocked. Now the ball loose. Finally corralled by Mia Hamm. She goes down and the foul is against the Brazilians. U.S. tries a quick restart. Brazilians take over, trailing four to nothing. Really, the Brazilian, I'm, I'm absolutely shocked at the Brazilians. They have not really exhibited the sort of skill that you, accept, you expect from a Brazilian team, that, that uh, a short passing game, uh, brilliant moves. They have played, and I think you have to give the U.S. some credit for this, a very average game so far. Now Brandy Chastain on the dribble. Drops it down towards the end line, and Karen Jennings pushed down with a forearm. 
And the foul is going to be against Brazil and against Elaine Orego. Well, as the frustration sits in with the Brazilian players, you're going to see a little bit more pushing and shoving. You're already seeing a little extra shot at the end of each play. Shannon Higgins will play it in. And again, you hear Pierre Raisin communicating with the defender. Shannon Higgins chipping it out in front, headed, oh, just wide. That one did not miss by much. A break in the action. The U.S. leads four to nothing. We'll be back in a moment. Crowd, crowd on hand here in Punyu, China, Yingdong Stadium. No, I didn't make it up. And boy, the fans here enjoying the action. The U.S. on top four to nothing. They've seen some tremendous soccer. And apparently, a timeout being taken here by the official Vadim Zouk. This may be an equipment repair. That or nope. they're trying to sneak in a substitution. Substitution. Gonsalves will come on. Coming off will be Marilza Silva. So Silva goes off. Gonsalves comes on. And here we go. Well, obviously, Brazil has inserted her to try to provide that spark plug, get something going, fresh legs, start running around, making something happen. Brazilians need to make something happen quick because they're down four to nothing to the United States. This the second game in the preliminary round for each team. There's not much more than 10, 15 minutes left in this game, so they better start putting some balls in the back of the net. Substitution officially coming at the 67th minute. Al Belo on the attack. Slides it right side. Prado. Prado going one on one. Plays it towards the box. Silva crosses it in front. The volley over the net and out of bounds. And a good scoring opportunity there. Maybe the first of this half, maybe the best of the game for the Brazilians. And it was all set up with some fancy footwork by Belo. She gets the ball and starts moving it around, controls it, and strings some passes together. They work the ball down into the 18-yard area, and then you get a free full volley at the, at the net. She put it over. She's unhappy with it. Moda would like to have that back, but that's the trouble. That is one of the most difficult shots in soccer. Trying to keep that shot down. What's the key to keeping that shot down? Getting over the ball. What you think is going to be in the middle of the net usually goes over the net. So if you try to drive the ball into the ground, chances are you're going to hit a line drive the way you want to hit it. Christine Lilly, nice steal there for the United States. Powers the ball down the field. Brazil sends it back. Here's Julie Foudy. Foudy slides the ball. To Aker Stahl. Now, Kevin, this is something that the kids can try at home. That is a difficult shot to take. And if they just throw the ball up in the air to themselves, try to hit a full volley under control where you want it. Give it a shot because that is one of the more difficult things to do in soccer. The parent offside previously against the United States. That's why Brazil took over. Now a foul against the United States. Getting set to put it into play. Rosa Lima wearing number two. Now she gives way. And Elaine Rigo. R-E-G-O. Rigo drives it towards the U.S. penalty area. The ball sky towards the end line. Let's see if it goes out. And it goes out along the sideline. So a throw in to the United States. Brazil has not had much success in the air. They've had more success going at the what little success they've had has been on the ground. In the air, the U.S. women have really been dominating this Brazilian team, especially. Under 20 minutes remaining. And again, the United States will get a throw in. Brazil not happy with it. Thought they should have had the ball. 
and Karen Jennings. Already with a goal here tonight. Three for the tournament. She gives way to Christine Lilly. Well, that throwing looks easy, but I know in talking with players, it is not the easiest thing to execute. Well, actually, I never really seemed to have a problem with it. I was always designated the long throw, run up the sideline. It was just that drag throw. It's easy to do wrong, that's for sure. Ball played out of there by Almeida. And here come the Brazilians again. They need offense, and they need it now. But again, the U.S. defense is there to stop. Another nice play by Mia Hamm. Mary Harvey. Harvey gets it back from Carla Worden. And the drop kick across midfield. U.S. Randy Chastain tripped up. Nice tackle there by Elaine Rago. And the Brazilians will move it the other way. Ball out of bounds and a throw in to the United States. It almost seems that the Brazilians can't compete speed-wise with the U.S. players. They, they certainly have the skills, but they have to beat the U.S. team with guile as opposed to just flat-out physical speed on the ground or uh, in the air going for the headers. And what do we have here? A little bit of a push. And it will be Brazil's ball. Rosa Lima will play it in. Sanira Prado helping out with the spot. Here's Lima to play it in. Loops it towards the penalty area, headed away. And again, the U.S. just not giving Brazil a chance to get set up and to do the things that they like to do, and that is precise passing, great one-on-one -on -one skills. Brandy Chastain drives it right side. Ball loose, out in front of goal! And the United States, with Mia Hamm, makes it five to nothing. Mia Hamm, one happy young lady. Congratulated by her teammates, Brandy Chastain, nice feed. Now, Brandy Chastain sits us up. They tried the offside trap. You see the one player run forward, and now you have a three-on-one situation. The keeper got burned on the far post in a goal prior, so now she tries to cover the far post, gives up the near post. Matt, why didn't the offside trap work? Well, here's a case where the offside trap became the suicide trap. Not all the Brazilians were on the same page. All of them ran up except one, and it's only that one being back that kills you because now they're in an overload situation, three on one, and the U.S. puts it away. Mia Hamm the goal, and it comes in the 65th minute. Five to nothing, the United States. Who'd have thunk it? The highly skilled Brazilians down by five. Mary Harvey leaps to come down with it. I'll tell you, Kevin, I'm really at a loss to explain why the U.S. seems to be dominating every phase of this game. You look at it, Brazil has a great, great soccer tradition. And it could be for any number of reasons, uh, but the U.S. really just seems to have every aspect of this game in hand. I know we could speculate all night, but I guess what you have to say is that it really shows the commitment that the Federation in the U.S. has made towards women's soccer and towards these young women. Absolutely. You look at all, all the programs that they have for women's soccer, and from Alan Rothenberg and Hank Steinbrecher, these guys have made a commitment to women's soccer. They're now getting paid. They're getting per diem. It's not much, but these girls have really shown a commitment to the game, and the Federation is backing them up, and it shows out here on the field. They are one of the tournament favorites in this Women's World Championship for soccer. And you can talk about it at this level. I mean, women's programs going all the way down to youth level. How many of these uh, young women are right out of the youth programs across America, out of Dallas, Texas, out of the Pacific Northwest? 
it's amazing the uh, the way women's soccer has taken hold in the United States, and I think this is evidence of it right here. U.S. nursing a five to nothing lead, and as you saw, 25 minutes gone in this 40 minute second half, and the Brazilians have yet to get the ball behind Mary Harvey. Linda Hamilton powers it down the field. Back to get it, Nogueira knocks it back into Marguerite Villarazin. Has to be a very frustrated goalkeeper for the Brazilians. I think she gave up some goals that I know she'd like to have back. She maybe not so much was caught out of position, but read the players wrong. At this caliber, caliber of play, you can't give any opening, and if you give up the near post, most certainly they're going to find the near post. Almeida down the left side, moving towards the area. Her drive wide and carried, I believe, out of bounds. Let's see what they say. It was carried out of bounds by Mary Harvey. And you can tell Sonera Fredo desperate to get that ball for Mary Harvey. She wants that corner kick. And I think Mary Harvey was saying that she caught that ball out of bounds. Of course, the ref saw it differently. That's a corner kick. Garcia Silva on the corner for the Brazilians who need to get the offense on track and now. Mia Hamm clears it, but not out. Here's Balo, long drive. Oh, just wide. So Balo got the shot, but pushed it wide to the left. That was a, a good, goal kick. That was a good, good shot because she took the shot in traffic. As you saw, it deflected off of one of the U.S. players, and that usually catches the goalkeeper wrong-footed. Goalkeeper sees the shot going one way, steps that way, and here's the shot. Watch it change direction, and the keeper has to take that one extra stutter step. And the U.S. on the goal kick. Knock it back into the midfield. U.S. holding on to a 5 to nothing lead. Here's Karen Jennings. Jennings has been marvelous in this tournament. Scoring a goal here tonight, two in game one against Sweden. And a throw-in coming up to the Brazilians. Karen Jennings has had a knack for soccer from a very early age. It's like she was discovered. The first time she got in a game, she scored a number of goals. And that was at the age of seven, and from that point on, Everyone has been watching her through college, the NCAA's all-time leading scorer. She's really done a marvelous job here on the U.S. women's national team, and uh, it shows. That was a U.S. throw-in, not a Brazilian throw-in. I stand corrected. There's a hard tackle on Karen Jennings. Ball out of play, and a throw-in coming up to the United States. And a substitution. So, a break in the action. The United States leading five to nothing. We'll be back in a moment. Christine Lilly sits down. Debbie Belkin checks in, number 16 into the U.S. lineup. Belkin a starter in game one against Sweden. Long cross out in front, headed by Foudy, right on. And right there was Pia Raisin. Boy, Julie Fowden. Foudy, rather, has really uh, come to the fore in this game. She had a very quiet first game against Sweden, but has played very well here tonight. She surely has, and she's one of those players that would play good for just about any team in the world. You, you like to call her that journeyman's type player. She could play well and contribute to any team she plays for. She has a good presence in the midfield and is able to control the ball and make some things happen. We are down to the final moments of this game. The official time kept on the field, Vadim Zouk. Maybe looking at his watch any second now. Ball played back in the United States, trying to nail down a shutout against the Brazilians. And the Brazilians show really no interest in going forward and really making a game of this. Ball played all the way back into Mary Harvey. Clock shows under 10 minutes to go. Five to nothing, second half action. 
Here comes Brandy Chastain going one on one, tries to center it. Out of bounds it goes. And a corner coming up for the Americans. What a nice little drag move that Brandy Chastain has. Here you see the trainer working on number 13, Christine Lilly. Of course, she had the hip pointer in game one, and I'm sure that's awfully painful. I, I know uh, athletes have had those injuries and say it's, just, it's one of the most painful injuries you can sustain. And there's really nothing you could do about it. Uh, she had that tightly wrapped, but that doesn't always seem to work. And usually it takes a, a week, sometimes two weeks for it to go away. It, it, it will hobble you. You will know it's there, and it's very painful. Ball towards the area. Knocked a mile in the air. Finally headed down by the Brazilian. They move it the other way. Now Balo in a foot race with Linda Hamilton. Hamilton keeping up with Balo. And look at that. Two players back. And the ball out of bounds. And what are we going to get here? We may get a caution, and we're going to. Balo pushed the U.S. player from behind. Linda Hamilton with a round of applause for Balo. Uh, I'm not sure she's so much applauding towards Balo as to the official for making the caution. That would be a little bit uh, unsportsmanlike if she did that. Ball will be played in. And I think that just shows Balo's frustration at the way this game has been going. She's really not had much help. And you can see the disconsolate look on the players uh, on the Brazilian bench. It's just one of those games that you just want to end. Let's get this over and get out of here. They still have a chance to get into the quarterfinals. The U.S. with a win here will advance to the quarterfinals with a game against Japan in two days. I know, Matt, you've played a lot of competitive sports, both soccer and football. Have you ever played in a game like this where you know you're probably not going to win it, but you've got to play out the final ten minutes? Oh, it's, a mis it's really a miserable time. You, you really don't want them to score on you anymore. Uh, you you want to make sure that they're not trying to embarrass you. Uh, that's when it really starts to get nasty. You just want it to end. It's the longest few minutes that you will play because you have no hope of catching back up. Even though the U.S. scored four goals, three goals in four minutes, uh, they know that there's little to no chance of that happening. So they just want it to end. So you knock the ball around. Don't do anything that gets you hurt. And just live to play another day against the Swedes. That will be Brazil's next game. And their chances of making the quarterfinals really devastated by what looks like it will be a loss here to the Americans. Well, in two days, it'll be the last day of the round-robin tournament where each of the three groups play each of the teams in that group. Now the big question in the final ten minutes, what about the shutout for Mary Harvey? Ball played out in front. Foudy got a foot on it but couldn't get really a good shot away, and it's handled by Pia Raisin. But a good, good effort there by Julie Foudy. You can bet the U.S. defense is going to be looking to protect the shutout. They'd love to get it for Mary Harvey, who has worked so hard. Was absolutely brilliant against Sweden. And has not been all that busy here tonight. That's true. Some of the, some of the good players of tonight's game for the U.S., Joy Beefield has really played well throughout this entire game. April Heinrichs, who came out, got those first two goals. Flick on header there, but an offside. And you can see, you can see clearly seven, eight yards offside. Nice effort there, though. So the restart to the United States. Leading five to nothing. And the next action for the Americans will come against Japan. And that should be a very interesting matchup. Japan, one of the teams, a lot of people in this tournament coming in, we're saying, are going to be one of the better teams in the tournament. We will see. Still a lot of soccer to be played in this one. Karen Jennings went hard into Elaine Rago. And the foul is going to be against... Rago. Nope, now they're going to say. 
Well, it is going to be against Rago, and Rago very slow in getting up. I think that's because Karen Jennings was up in the air and Rago went underneath. Anytime a player is in an exposed position like that, when a player ducks underneath, submarines them, uh, that's a dangerous play and the foul is called. And she ends up getting hurt in the process. Of course, the risk of injury increases when you lack the body control when you are airborne, so they always give that player the benefit of the doubt. U.S. looking to make it six. They have had their way offensively with the Brazilians. Pia Raisin. Easy stop and clears it up across the midfield line. Now Silva can't control. Brazilians try and bring it the other way. Belo has to be frustrated. One of the big offensive guns for the Brazilians and just has not gotten it done. And give a lot of credit to Linda Hamilton. She earned the start tonight. And she has paid her dues against Belo. That an obvious offside, Julie Foudy. Foudy, a fan of beach volleyball. I don't know if they play beach volleyball here. I know they're talented volleyball players. I'm not sure if they have much beach volleyball here in China. Brazil will take over here. Now a little bit of confusion. Is that a free kick or a throw in? It will be a throw in. Well, after the win tonight, Kevin, the U.S. definitely advances to the quarterfinals. It's just against whom. They still have one more game to play before the quarterfinals, and that's Japan, the last member of their group. A little bit later on, we'll... Maybe an update on some of the other scores. Look out, Mona's there. Oh, she fired it wide. No goal. You saw the net move, but it hit the side of the net. And the United States shutout remains intact, but it came dangerously close to ending with the shot by Rosalind Mota. Here's a replay of that, but I think Mary Harvey feels that they dodged a little bit of a bullet here because she just didn't quite have the angle, didn't, ha didn't get out quick enough to stop Moda's shot. Throw in coming up to the Brazilians. As you look at Shannon Higgins, number three. Now Brandy Chastain doing some forechecking. Here's Balo, the drive, oh, wide of the goal. Well, in that case, you didn't see Linda Hamilton near Balo. Ba Linda Hamilton moved forward to cover the next member of the Brazilian defense, just slid over and left Balo alone, and she had that opportunity. Carla Worden, she's had a fine couple of games for the United States. And again, the Brazilians try to put the pressure on, but just have been unable to get anything going here offensively. You talked about Linda Hamilton. Linda Hamilton, is she an all-American sort of young lady? Her hobby is tennis, basketball, golf, and, quote, good-looking men. Now, there's a hobby. <laughs> well, she is in speech communication. I guess she is uh, just trying to communicate with another species. Bo Jackson has his hobbies. Linda Hamilton has hers. That she does. Well, she's done a great job tonight marking Balo, and I, I don't think that we can talk enough about the play that she has had. Uh, when you shut down the top gun on the, other t on, a, on the other team, that says a lot, and that's what she's done tonight. So hats off to Linda Hamilton, in spite of her hobbies. <laughs> <laughs> Brazilians trying to make a go of it. Balo tying up with Hamilton. Balo still. And look at Linda Hamilton, just relentless defensively. Ball knocked back in. Look out. Mary Harvey has to cover up. And the shutout remains intact. And we understand under five minutes. In fact, now we are down to injury time. So we'll watch Vadim Zouk. Doesn't appear to be looking at his watch yet. 
It looks like the U.S. is going to win. The big question is, what about the shutout for Mary Harvey? Here's Karen Jennings. Jennings pushes it wide. Oh, taken down by Elaine Rigo. Foul against the Brazilians. Vadim Zook has really controlled this game well. He, he's not let it get out of control, but he's also let the women play their game. There's been some pushing, shoving going on, but he's just not lost control. And I think this shows you the caliber of officiating in FIFA. And there it is. It is over. The United States has moved closer to the quarterfinals with a win tonight over Brazil. Final score, 5 to nothing. Time now for...